So, my dear ones, welcome into the sanctuary on this beautiful day, this wonderful Sunday in March, as our life and our year marches on. We are going to know that we will march with it, with great energy and great enthusiasm and a sense of all being well. Because we have decided that our life is indeed a march, probably like a Susan march, rather than a funeral dirge. Away with the funeral dirges now, and the limping along, and so on. We're going to stand tall and straight and move forward in that absolute faith of knowing that it doesn't matter what the appearance seems to be, there's an answer, there's a way through it. And today is all about relationship. We're asked as a community to look upon what we understand relationship to be. And as I was saying this morning, we all have had our fair share of relationships, good ones, bad ones, in between ones, relationships of this and that and the other. And we all are experienced in some way in the wonderful opportunity to play the game of relationships. But it's all a nonsense, really, I have come to conclude. Really, it's all a great big nonsense because, lo and behold, as I was sitting at my desk last night, thinking about us all on Sunday morning, it was very clear to me there's only one relationship. There's only one relationship, and we're all a part of it. There is not uh, uh, myriads of relationships. There's one relationship. God is in relationship with itself all the time in countless different ways of expressing that relationship. But it is only one relationship. And that's what is meant when we say there is only God. So there's one relationship, and I'm in it, you're in it, everything is in it, and no thing and no one is excluded from that relationship. No thing, no one is excluded from the one relationship there is. It's called life, it's called source, it's called spirit, and that's the only relationship there is. Showing up as itself in countless ways, in countless ways that we will never be able to get our spiritual, mental, arms around, ever. We're always going to realize this more fully as we grow and advance and wake up. That's the way we grow and advance, we wake up. That's all we do. And so this thing called relationship is calling us today, this week, and for this month. Relationship. So how am I in relationship? How am I as part of that one relationship? What is my breath like? What is my pulse like? What is the throb of my heart like? How is that showing up as an individualized expression, as a personality, as an ego? How does that show up for me in my life? What is going on by my breath, by my beat, by my pulse, by my rhythm, by my being? What is happening to the whole body because of my breath in it, my pulse in it, and so on. So Ernest Holmes says, and I, I love the way he speaks so clearly. He says, you know what? All of us are at the mercy of our mental and our emotional perceptions. We're all at the mercy of our mental and emotional perceptions as an individualized, formed express, expression of spirit. Uh, that which is human uh, in us has the opportunity to um, get on the inside of what it is to understand duality and understand the choices of uh, light and darkness. And it has been proven over and over again now recently in science that actually the mind, believe it or not, and I only realized this deeply this week as I read an article on it, that the mind has a negative bias. Left to itself, the mind has a negative bias. It'll go negative. Left to itself. And so you and I, knowing this, we're forearmed. So it calls us much more to being alert and awake and tuning in to what's going on in our minds so that we can say, ah, 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 I don't think so. You're not going there. 
mm -mm, been there, done that, bought all the t-shirts. So <laughs> to be able to be able to have control of the mind and the emotions is to be poised, is to be able to be a beat and a pulse and a throb in the one body of life, the one mind of life, the one heart of life that is enriching and enhancing and causing wonderful advancement, you see, or not, as the case may be, depending upon how our mental and emotional environments are. And so the question for us all to ask is, well, how, where am I right now with this? How am I right now with this? How is my mental environment doing? How is my emotional environment doing? When I consciously become aware of my mentality and my emotionality, do I feel really good? Do I feel relaxed? Do I feel joyous? Do I feel happy? Do I feel okay? <clears throat> or do I go, oh my God, it's not safe in here, um, you see. So the whole question is the question of how safe am I in my mental environment? How safe am I in my emotional environment? Because if I get that right for me, I'm going to get that right for every part of the relationship out there. Because I only can present who and what I am myself. I can only share what I'm mentally experiencing. I can only share what I'm emotionally experiencing and nothing else. That will be the vibe I'm going to be giving off. So now for me, the whole thing that keeps calling is how safe, how safe, how safe are you? Are you a safe environment for other people to be in? Are you a safe environment for yourself to be in? And that goes for you mixing and mingling amongst other individualized expressions of life showing up by means of persons, places, and things. Do I want to be in the company of that which is not safe? Whether it be a person, place, or thing. Because of their own individualized emotional and uh, mental states. Do I want that? Do I need to be in that? And of course the answer is, of course I don't need to be in it. <clears throat> I may choose to be in it, but I don't need to be in it. But the whole work has to take place here in me. The whole work has to take place here in me, first and foremost. Because if I get this seminal relationship that I have with myself sorted out, then all my other relationships is an amazing, miraculous thing, fall perfectly into place, and everything is truly divine. And I'm enjoying my relationships with everything and everyone. But it doesn't matter how beautiful the people and the relationships are out there. If I haven't got that in here, I'm not going to get that from out there. I'm not going to feel that from out there. It's not going to do anything much for me out there except cause me to be upset thinking, how come they're so happy all the time? Blah, 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 you see. So it's all about I, not me, it's all about the I of me and the I of you and getting that beautifully tuned with all that I am in my humanity and in my divinity and to bring that beautiful balance between the two. That's how the great master teacher Jesus became consciously Christed. He always was, so are you, always were Christed. But his question of his becoming consciously Christed, he was able to get the balance perfectly. And the balance between the two is what consciously Christs us. The spiritual man, Ernest Holmes called it, because back then they didn't have inclusive language. The spiritualized person, individual, you see. And that's where you and I want to be. I'm knowing oh, we wouldn't be here. We'd be out there, you know, having fun on a Sunday morning in a different way. Not that we're not having fun here. We can have fun here too. But we'd be having it in a different way. Because truly, something in us is saying, gosh, enough already. Come on, get it sorted so that you can hop, skip, and jump and enjoy your life and add to the, you know, the beauty and the grace and the, the, the movement upward, forward, and onward 
in life, in all of life, in the one body of life, you see. I don't want to be a hang-me-down in the one body of life. I want to be, you know, that which raises it up and expands it. That's what I want, and I know that's what you want, too. I mean, we, we don't always measure up, of course, and as long as we're wearing a human body, we'll disappoint ourselves if we allow ourselves to be disappointed. But we can just say, hmm, uh, yeah, that was very, very spiritually unskilled. Let's not do that again, as Tig Nakhan would say. You know, he would speak of people, you know, the horrible people that other people would say would be horrible people. He'd say, well, they're just not spiritually skilled yet. <laughs> you see? And so you and I are not just totally spiritually skilled yet. That's why we get on each other's nerves and disappoint each other and upset each other and so on, which causes me to remember that the, uh, the quickest way to handle anger is to delay. The quickest way to um, handle uh, criticism is to delay. The, the quickest way to handle any negative is delay, put the brakes on. And for you and for me, that first means take a deep, huge breath, suck in as much as you can of the oxygen that you need in order to delay. And it's a wonderful thing when that happens in relationships, they change. When we put the brakes on, when any negative thing arises and we delay, we just stop and prevent all kinds of things getting worse and worse and worse. We really do. And we give ourselves pause enough to be able to say, now in the great scheme of things, is this worth the blow up that's going to occur if I open my mouth and launch it, you know? That's a big part of relationships. It really is. So holding the tongue is a very good thing. It's a very, very good thing. But coming down to it, coming back to it, the only relationship you and I have to be careful about is the one I have with myself. Because if I'm careful with that, I will be careful with the relationship of all the body as the body shows up by means of a person, a place, or a thing. I will be careful, I will be mindful. And so how do I go about the business of catching myself on? How do I come about the business of growing the self of myself? Well, you know, Will Rogers, that wonderful cowboy a long time ago, said, you know, we cannot have a better world without each individual becoming better. And what we mean by each individual becoming better is something different, maybe, to what the world um, thinks about it. Because becoming better means I have to gain more, get more, release more, whatever it is of, of this, that, and the other. And I have to maybe deepen myself and take some more classes, get more therapy, get more counseling, uh, you know, get two or three or four practitioners or whatever it looks like so that I can get better, so the world can get better. No, the, the response from us is how I get better and the world gets better is not by getting, it's by releasing. Releasing what? The hidden splendor within me, the wholeness within me, the completeness within me, the grace within me, the light within me, the life within me, the love within me, by releasing it, becoming extravagantly opulent in its release. That's how I grow, and that's how the world grows too. There's no other way. I keep saying it over and over again, you are the one, you, nobody else. It's not going to be a saint or a politician or a guru or a whatever coming into town and saving us all. The only one to save you is you. And in saving myself, I save the world. And it's as big as that. And you're as able as that. And you're as strong as that. And you are as capable as that. No matter if there's half a wheel on your wagon and you don't know how you're actually rolling along. It doesn't matter. The wagon is not you. It's just the vessel that contains you. But it's not you. You are so much more than ever you could imagine or think yourself to be, and so am I. We just have to wake up to it. There's no other way. It's all about waking up, waking up, waking up. 
Now, Maya Angelou has always stressed that community is the answer. She says it's the beauty and the healing power of family that grows us. The beauty and the healing power of family that grows us. We are not going to do this on our own. We need some help along the way from the other part and particles of the great one body. We certainly do. And we grow best in community because if the community is safe, and it's all about safety, if the community I'm in, if my village is safe, I will grow. I will grow. There's no doubt about it, and so will everybody else in the village. They will grow if it is a safe place. And what does a safe place mean? A safe place means that I can be however I am and who I am in any given moment, and I will not lose the support. I will not lose the respect. I will not lose the love of the village. But I will be helped and I will be supported, I will be aided by the village through the village reminding me of how wondrous I am and the greatness that I am and the beauty that I am. And the village will identify with the truth of me, not with the appearances that are showing up by means of me that are not the truth. That's how we create a safe environment. That's how we stop criticizing each other and judging each other and condemning each other and gossiping about each other. Oh, the pain of gossip and the terrible retribution of gossip. Oh, we tell tales about each other. We make decisions about each other. We draw opinions about each other. And we share that with other people thinking we know what we're talking about. And we know who we're talking about. And we haven't a clue. We haven't a clue. We don't even know who we are ourselves. How can I define you? How can I say you're a this or a that or the other? How can I judge you by an action of yours and a reaction of mine? I can't. I can be irritated, I can be upset, I can be disappointed, I can be annoyed, but that's a choice on my part. But it's not for me to share all of that with anybody about you because that would be to dishonor and disrespect you and it would be for me to create great separation in life and living and add to the negativity that's out there. It's not to say that as human beings, we're not going to disappoint each other, and we're not going to feel irritation growing because of each other. We're not going to upset each other and hurt each other because we're allowing that to happen, because we've drawn conclusions, we've made judgments about whatever it is. Relationship is the only challenge in life and living. And you know yourself what doesn't work in your relationships. And if we keep doing what doesn't work, what does it say about us? We're totally unconscious, is what it says about us. And we've totally separated and isolated ourselves as individual, different, apart from anything else or anyone else. So relationship has to do with relating, relating, and relating on the affirmative side has to do with Mending and fixing and healing whatever appears to need mending and fixing and healing. And let me tell you, you're the ones with greater knowledge. You're the ones with a greater open receptivity to all of this. So the world is doubly depending upon you. Your family is depending upon you. Your friends are depending upon you. The people you bump into every day is depending upon you. The people in your workplace are depending upon you to be that integrative, uh, unifying energy, the glue that keeps it all together. 
in spite of what you may think about yourself as not measuring up or not equal to, that's all baloney. You measure up, you have measured up, you wouldn't be here if you didn't measure up. You're equal to, you wouldn't be here if you were not equal to. You're able, you wouldn't be here if you were not able. It's all yours. You've been given it all. You are strong, you are powerful, you are mighty. You are wonderful. These are the terms that describe you in scriptures. And really, we have to start identifying with the truth about ourselves now. Starting right where we are, no matter how awful that might be, no matter how unsafe our mental and emotional environments might be just now, we have to get over that and say, you know what? It's a thought, that is. It's a feeling, that is. I have to stop that thinking. I have to stop that feeling. And when I do, my gosh, it's like miracles happen, but they're not miracles. Every situation, every classroom that I've ever taught in, in high school or junior college, the, the students themselves would put together, they were led uh, at one part of a wall that said, be aware, care, share. And that was the motto, to act with each other, around each other, in the company of other, being aware, caring, and sharing that which is the truth about ourselves and each other. That's what we do, we do. And so for life to be meaningful, and it must be meaningful, I must know how meaningful my life is. And it is written that if you and I can just cause one person, one person to breathe more easily, then our life is a great success. One person to breathe more easily then our life is a success. Look how successful we could feel it to be if we helped anybody we met to breathe more easily. Why not? Because we can. We have it in us to be able to do that, to facilitate that. And all we have to do is to release the hidden splendor within us in order to be that wonderful integrating energy that we can be in life and raise everything and everyone up around and about us and raise all of the consciousness in life and living. And for heaven's sake, stop being afraid if you are. Stop being afraid. The world has never been in a better state than it's in now. Now that's a mouthful. But the world has improved over the years. Believe it or not, we're less brutal, etc., than we have been in the past. Now, I know if you look out there, you're not going to find evidence to that effect. But there's a whole lot of great, good stuff going on in the world that you never hear about because it's not negative enough and it's not sensational enough, etc., etc., etc. There's stuff going on of goodness that never has gone on before. It's a beautiful thing to behold. Groups everywhere, people like yourselves coming together and knowing something greater and not being afraid. The whole thing is be not afraid. I go before you always. Follow me with courage and faith and know that good and only good is the result of it all. And you are that good, and so it is. <laughs> for spirit, for spirit, for spirit. For spirit in all of you. See, you're getting, you're sensing the energy of that power and that presence within you. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. That's what we need to be doing.